Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixel and Perfect. How are you doing? I hope you're having a fantastic day and making it a brilliant one. Today I'm going to share with you an easy trick to create shadows from scratch in Photoshop. Now take a look at this photo. It is not possible that we always have the luxury of having the shadow on a plain background or ground so that we can easily extract it. By the way, if you do have the luxury to do that, watch this video. It is much easier that way. But in most cases, we do have something like this. The ground is not very plain. It has so many ups and downs, so many texture. In these cases, it is absolutely impossible to extract the shadow. It is much easier indeed to create the shadow from scratch. Now to create a more realistic shadow, we need to first understand how these shadows are created. Now when you look at this photo, think of the shadow as layers. So you can consider this entire area, I'm gonna mark it for you as layer one, right? I'm gonna quickly do it. This is layer one first layer of shadow. Now when you look at it closely, there are areas which are darker than that. And why are they darker? They are darker because less light is going into those places. And those are these areas. Look at this. See? So you can consider this as layer 2. Now there are areas which are way more darker. And those are these areas, right? You can see some areas like this right over there. And this is layer 3. And the layer 4 right here, look at it closely, just under it, as a very thin line where no light is going through. That, my friend, is layer 4. I cannot even mark it, but you get the point. This, my friend, is layer 4. If you think of shadows this way, it is very easy to fill it, brush it. Trust me, it is way easier than you think. And we're going to do it together. Don't worry. So without any further ado, let's get started. back at the magical world of Photoshop and as usual, if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you can always go ahead and check the links in the description. Now, this is important for, let's say you're a product photographer and if you want it on a solid background or if there's any item that you want to create a shadow of, this is a crucial lesson. So let's go ahead and get started. The very first thing we need to do is to make the selection of the product right here. So we have a couple of bar of soap. So now you can take the time to use the selection method of your choice. You can use the object selection tool. And if you do that, if you do make a selection like that, and it does a fantastic selection. Now to say time I already have made the selection. Now keep in mind I did make the selection using the pen tool because that my friend is the most accurate way to do it especially when it comes to products. So to load the selection we're going to go to select load selection and I saved it as soap. Hit OK. The selection is loaded. By the way I'm just going to give you the starting PSD with the selection in build. So check the link in the description to download that. You don't have to make the selection. With the selection active click on the mask button. Now it's separated. Now let's name this soap. All right, first of all, let's create a white background. You can also extend the canvas if you like, because at times we might want to position it in such a way that we don't want any edges around the edge. So press C for the crop tool and extend it a little too much so that we have space for enough shadows. All right, this will give us a lot of flexibility. Now let's create a white background by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and then choose solid color and choose white and place it under the soap. Let's start with creating the shadows. Now to create the shadows, we can take the assistance of the existing shadow as guidelines. By the way, I turned off the mask by holding the shift key and clicked on the mask button. Now let's create a layer on top of color fill and this is our layer one of shadow. Let's keep it at layer one and let's name this shadow. Now you can outline the shadow using the pen tool, the lasso tool, whatever you wish. But in this case, since most of the shadow is straight to save time, we're just gonna use the polygonal lasso tool. All right, so let's start from right here and go till here. I'm just extending shadow way too much. It won't be that much, but just to be on the safer side, right? This seems about right, and let's finish it off right here. Once you're happy with the selection, fill it with black. For the foreground color, black. If it's not already black, you can always press D to set the foreground and the background color to default. So with the foreground color black, press Alt Backspace, Option Delete on a Mac, and now you can turn on the mask if you wish. Now I know it looks crap, just wait for it. By the way, if you look at the original shadow, notice one thing closely. Look at the shadow near to the object. It is less blurrier than the one which is further away, right? The shadow gets more and more blurrier as it goes further and further away from the object. So we have to mimic that in the shadow we created as well. So hold the shift key, click on the mask to turn it back on. And then with this layer selected, go to filter, convert for smart filters, hit OK. Why did we do that? So that whatever filter we apply, we'll be able to change the values later. In this case, it would be blur. Let's go to filter, blur gallery, and then Field Blur. Why Field Blur? Because it gives us multiple points to adjust different blurs in different areas. So right in here, we want a little bit of blur. And right in here, we want a lot of blur. So let's increase the blur a lot, like this. Right in here as well, we want a lot of blur. And right in here, very less blur. 
Now, there are two ways to adjust the blur right here. One is the smart way, one is the technical way. The technical way is clicking on these points and individually working the slider. Smart way is just move the points a little away to control how these shadows are blurred. That's all. So I'm going to move this point further away just like this. Have a look. We are getting that nice gradient. Let's zoom out a bit. I like this gradient. I'm going to increase the blur a little more. There you go. Let's move it a little further away. Let's move it right here. There you go. Hit OK once you're satisfied. And that looks pretty good. Now keep in mind, you can change the values anytime you wish. Why? Because this, my friend, is a smart object. Now, of course, this is too much. Let's go ahead and decrease the opacity. Let's keep it at 40 for now. Again, we can change this later. Now let's create a mask. Click on the mask button right there. And I would prefer, why not create a negative mask? Hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the mask button to create a negative mask. Then take the brush, take a soft round brush and make the brush really, really large like this. With white as the foreground color, just start bringing in the shadows. See that? So this, my friend, was our first layer of shadow. Now, if it doesn't look right, don't worry. We can always adjust it later. Let's focus on the second layer. It is just like giving final exams in school. Once you're done with the first test, please do not worry too much about it. Move on to the second test. And after all the tests are done, then you can always re-evaluate. Because that way you will just destroy the results of the subsequent tests. That's what my father told me. Anyway, let's go ahead and create a brand new layer. This is layer number two. And this is also for the shadow. All right, let's go back to the polygonal lasso to and now let's draw in the second layer. By the way, if you accidentally made a point, press backspace. That point will go away. Have a look. See, those points are going away. So that's a good tip right there. Let's add a little too much here as well. That's something we are doing on purpose. Okay, fill it as well with black. Alt backspace, option delete, press control or command D. Similarly, let's go to filter, convert for smart filters, hit OK and then filter. Blur gallery, field blur. Now in this case, you can also choose to do the same thing here. A little bit of blur, but that will be a little more than previous. And here, a lot of blur, loads of blur. There you go. Similarly, right here as well, less blur. Here, loads of blur. I feel that this blur also needs to increase. That looks about right. Hit OK. Now on top of that, you can also add a little more Gaussian Blur to soften everything up a little bit. Let's go to Filter, Blur, and then Gaussian Blur. 100 is fine. Hit OK. There you go. Now let's go ahead and decrease the opacity. Slowly and gradually increase it. This one is also good at 36. I think this area would need a little more blur. So we can add a blur on top of that. No issues. Go to Filter, Blur Gallery, and Tilt Shift this time. And let's have the blur start from right here from the solid line and end at the dotted line right over here. Let's rotate it a little bit just like this. And then let's go ahead and increase the blur. All right, that seems about right. Hit OK. Now let's worry about layer number three. So let's collapse it. It's becoming too busy. Let's create a new layer. And this, my friend, is layer three for the shadow with the help of the polygonal lasso tool. Let's do the honors. Let's fill it. Control or Command D. And now let's do the honors of blurring it by going to filter. Don't forget, convert for smart filters. Hit OK. And then go to filter. Blur, you can apply Gaussian Blur right now. It doesn't really matter much. Blur and then Gaussian Blur. I think about 140 is nice. Now, of course, decrease the opacity, slowly and gradually increase it. I would go back to Gaussian Blur and increase it further, 180. And let's decrease the opacity slightly to about 60. Now let's do the final layer, that is layer number four. Layer four for the win. Polygonal lasso tools selected. And then let's start from right here. And we can actually make an outline here. Since it will be very close, an outline is enough. Let's fill it. Alt backspace, option delete. You can barely see it, but we have to blur it a little by going to filter, convert for smart filters, hit OK, and then filter, Gaussian blur. Very slight blur, not that much. Now let's blur slowly and gradually. Something about 19.4 feels great. Hit OK. Decrease the opacity, of course and slowly and gradually increase it to a point where it looks okay. And now you can work on the opacity of the rest of the shadows. Just by working up the opacity, it makes so much of a difference. Now at this point, I would highly recommend that you go ahead and take a break and then get back to it. Go for a walk, go drink coffee, 
tea, whatever you like, water, speak to your family. And then when you get back to it, you might see something that you might have missed because you were so engrossed in the work. So now when I look at it, this area looks a little too weird. We need to fix that. This area as well, too weird. So how do we fix it? That area needed to be a little more sharper. So we're going to go to layer one, to the mask of layer one, take the brush, take a soft round brush, make it a little bit smaller. And now just take it away. Take the extra away. So we're just going to dab right here. Make sure the flow and opacity both are at 100. Just dab with black as the foreground color. Hold the shift key and dab right in here. That is taken care of. Now let's do it at a better angle. Dab right here. I think this would be a better angle. Maybe that way. Anyway, decrease the flow 20 and slowly and gradually let's fix the angle here. There we go. That is fixed. Similarly right here as well. Dab, hold the shift key. Just there. Now I know it creates a two shadow effect, which makes it look even more realistic because if you have a look at the original one, you would notice right here that there are two layers, right? And if you do want to paint a little more manually, you're welcome to do so. But in e-commerce websites, trust me, this is enough. But I know if you do want to paint, you can just go ahead and create a brand new layer. This is just for brushing. Take the brush black as the foreground color and then just start brushing a little bit here. If you wish, there you go, adds a little more to it. So that's up to you as much as you want to do. Now, sometimes when we do create shadows from scratch, it makes sense to also darken the areas of the object which are closer to the shadow. So let's create a layer on top of the soap and let's limit it just to the soap so that whatever we do will be limited to the soap. All right. So to limit it, hold the Alt key, the Option key and click on the line between these two layers. Of course, let's go ahead and erase that. Control or Command A and delete. I can darken a little bit of the object as well. Now it was already dark, so you don't have to do it much, but in some cases you might have to do it. That's why I'm showing it to you. Now you can go back to the brush layer, regular brushing, zoom in right here and create the extreme dark shadows. See now it's looking really realistic. So you can easily do it by dabbing once right here, hold the shift key and then continue. Continue through the unevenness of it. You can think of this shadow as the fifth layer, but this is the shadow that just connects it to the floor or the ground. It will be more in these creases here and there. It doesn't have to be in all of the places. I can of course control the opacity of it. And there you go, my friend. That's how to create shadows in Photoshop. By the way, if you want to make it a little more fancy, there's a way to do it. So select all the shadows. This was the brushing and hold the shift key. Select the last shadow right here. Press Ctrl or Command G. Now on top of this shadow group, let's name this shadow. Press Ctrl Shift N, Command Shift N. New layer dialog box will show up. Change the mode to overlay. Check fill with overlay neutral color. Some of you already know what we are doing. We are adding a little bit of noise to make the ground a little more natural. Let's go to filter, convert for smart filters, hit OK. Now let's go to filter, noise and add noise. 30 is fine, uniform, monochromatic, hit OK. Just by doing that, have a look. So much more natural it looks. Now the noise is very, very sharp, computeristic. So we need to blur it a little bit. Let's do it by going to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. 0 0.8 or 7 or 6 is fine. Let's go with 0 0.8 and then you can always decrease the opacity of it. Let's keep it 44 and just by adding that, it adds so much. So here's without the grain, not looking as good. Here's after the grain. Looks like a nice 3D render, doesn't it? So that, my friend, is an easy way to create shadows from scratch in Photoshop. Now, if you want to make it even more realistic and natural, you can always take the brush and paint in a little bit more. But this is more than enough. If you're doing product photography and putting your product on e-commerce websites, this is all you need. I hope this video helped you. Let's do a quick little recap. Think of shadows as layers. So you can think of it in terms of as many layers as you like. If you look at the original shadow right here, have a look. There's this big area, which you can consider as layer one. There's this smaller area, which is a little more dark because lesser light reaches there. And then there's this area, which is very close to it. It is darker. And then there is this area, which is absolutely under it where no light is reaching. It's the absolute darkest place. So consider those layers and create shadows in those layers and you would be fine. You know what? Now when I look at it, I think that the darkening on top of the object was not a good idea in this case. So let's turn it off and see how that helps. All right. That is in fact better. Anyway, I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting Pix Imperfect on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. What can I do?